let me welcome you uh, to be here. I want to give you just a two-minute history of this spot. Uh, this place originally uh, was to be an art studio, which it is, and also a coffee shop. Uh, we had plans earlier, uh, back when we had funding, and most of you know that our funds were cut some years ago. We have no funding now, and the, the miracle is that we're still here. Uh, this uh, building is occupied by six to seven hundred um, people in our community. I'm refusing to call this a shelter anymore. It's a, it's a community, and we have uh, really three, four categories of service where people are living and are being served. And um, these men that are in transition, men that are, that are R, men that are RVs, they really do not consider this place as a shelter. They consider it their home. And it is in fact, and we are hoping that this coffee shop is going to be a means of people to come and see what's going on here. We want people to come in here. Uh, I've, I've got this apron and it's a permanent thing. I'm going to be in here and we're going to have people uh, from all those buildings and all over the place. If you folks will bring people in and we can sit down and tell them what we're doing and give them a tour of the place and all of those things. You will also see these donation uh, fish bowls that I bought at Walmart this morning at five at seven o'clock. Uh, these, are, these are for you. Uh, to put donations in, and I hope everybody here today will put a donation of some sort in. Some of you can uh, give a little more than I can. I'll give a little bit, but I hope everybody who is here will make some kind of donation in here today. The richest board member we ever had took me uh, fundraising one morning. We went to three businesses, and in each business, he asked the head person to give $50,000. I about fell out of a chair when he did that. I never asked anybody for five, you know. I couldn't believe it. And when we got out, I said, Lewis, man's name was Lewis Madison. I said, Lewis, why would you ask for so much money? He said, remember this, he put his arm around me. He said, remember this, every time you ask anybody for money, you're not asking for yourself. You're asking for somebody else. And I know that every person in this room today is here because you're here helping somebody else. That's, that's who you are and that's your face and I know that. And I thank you so very much for being here. Um, I want to recognize just a, a few groups of people um, before uh, Ed Fuller blesses this place for us. And I want to hear from um, I don't know of a clergyman who's here today other than Ed Fuller and me, except Jerry Farber. Jerry Farber is the only other preacher that I know present. <laughs> and, and before Ed does the, um, let's say, the heavenly blessing, Jerry's going to come and do the earth. First of all, thanks for coming, and, and uh, I'm humbled to be a part of the group for 15 or so years, and I love a new gym. And I've said, this is combat to get the awareness out there, and more important, to get people to understand that uh, there before the grace of God, anybody could be walking in here. Yeah. Last night, Warren Buffett, who's one of the world's richest men, was on a TV show that was called Giving. Bill Gates was on the show new Indian billionaires were talking about. And they said something, because what Jim said, he gets his strength from the people who are in the shelter. He learns every moment from, from the people. Warren Buffett said, you know, I can give anything. I can give a billion dollars. In fact, he's giving $30 billion to the world. Ted Turner's already given a billion dollars. But he said the real test of a giver is when it costs you something. Me giving costs me nothing, because he has 50 or so billion dollars. He said, the person who gives $20, which is going to be the movie money for that week, or the pizza money, and it won't be the pizza or movie that week, he said, that is what people have to learn 
where real giving is. So I appreciate you holding my checks. I've been giving for 15 years, but always a post-data check, which is Jim is trying to get me to start honoring you. A couple of hundred thousand dollars in checks. I'm, I'm, as soon as the lottery ticket comes out, I'm going to give it. I uh, want to tell you, a couple weeks ago, I have a 10-year-old son, and he was starting to complain because we didn't have a computer at my house. I don't own a computer. His mother and I have divorced. At his home with the mother, there are three computers. He's got every gadget known for young men and women. All the, the camp got everything. So it was starting to get a little bit aggravating, and I said, Josh, I want you to go to down to the task force with me. He's been before when he was five years old. But we came down here, I think you're the other woman who was saying, yeah, she showed us around. And Joshua's mouth was open the whole time. He was just, among other things, he was fascinated that so many people were here. And with no television, no computers, no sofas. And he understood the blessing of us and wants to come back and wants to bring kids and wants to, at his school, to raise things so I'll turn the list on to the teachers. Because the kids to me are the most generous of the purists. Once they get a sense of this, they'll be here. In closing, I want to say Joe Beasley was one of the greatest athletes ever to play college basketball. Joe. He was 6'3", 240 pounds, and there was a basketball player named Dr. Julius Irvin, who was better than Michael Jordan. I know that. I played against him. And Joe was an All-American for six years in a row at the University of Georgia. Six years in a row. Joe <laughs> Fights broke out. We have to go to war. I hope not, but if we do, I want Anita first, Jim second, and Joe in my box. So and we can take on any other army in the world. This man held, you remember that? You held Dr. Julius Irvin for 64 points. <laughs> Dr. J became an icon athlete. You went into witness protection. <laughs> Anyway, thank you all for coming. I'm real proud to be a part of the family. Oh, wait a minute. I did want to mention real quickly my friend Andrea Da Vinci, who brought the uh, heard you at the punch line the other night, brought all the, uh, the, the cupcakes, and Abby, Irma, and Dick from their own group that they do wonderful things teaching children about loving and, and not, not bullying. And, and so it's great. And my cousin Henry Parker came. Okay. Yes. Okay? All right, let's go. We have not had anyone to support us spiritually, psychologically, economically than Mr. Fuller. He's done that. And he's here today as a man of God and as a preacher. And we welcome him to come and give us our give us his blessing and ask God's blessing and and presence with us. When he concludes we will then have our refreshments, our cookies, all of these things. Andrea, thank you so much for the cupcakes. Um, we want this kind of thing all the time here. So I want you to do again what you did then and everybody else continue doing. Come back, visit with us. And we will, I will not say anything else today. Um, Reverend Fuller, will conclude the blessing and then we will have Pepsi and others pouring coffee for us up here. And the sweeteners and cream and stuff will be over there. You get your coffee here and walk over there and put money in that jug and then here, ready. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. I'd like to say one thing. Sure. I, I, I don't want to take credit for, for reading this stuff. It was, it was donated by Confection Perfection, which is a bakery where I was. Wow. I just didn't want to clear that up. Perfection for It will see Confection for more. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, Jim, so much. And thank all of you for being here. And, and I'm delighted, honored, and humbled to have been asked to come and, and uh, ask God for his blessing on this place and this wonderful realization of a long-term dream being realized in such a radically different way than it was originally envisioned, and, and that being the result of God's blessing, 
and the wonderful faithfulness of the people who come here and people who work here. The, this place of sharing and hospitality, I believe, I believe is it, surely pleasing to God. Please listen to these words of Holy Scripture. From the Gospel of Luke, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Reading from Deuteronomy, you shall love the stranger. And from Paul's letter to the Romans, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, contribute to the needs of the saints, and extend hospitality to strangers. And from his letter to the Hebrews, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. I can't think of anything more wonderful and rewarding than entertaining God's angels. So today, let's invite these holy angels to visit this place, to hover over this place, keeping it safe and holy for all, and for all who invite others and all who come here. So let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, grant to this coffee shop the grace of your presence, that you may be known to all who come here, and be the defender of this place, and be with us always this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 The effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, tranquility, and trust forever. My people will abide in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. Unless the Lord builds the house, their labor is in vain who build it. Let us pray. Visit, O blessed Lord, this home with the gladness of your presence. Bless all who come here, all who live here, with the gift of your love, and grant that they may manifest your love to each other and to all who come here. May they grow in grace and in knowledge and love of you, guide, comfort, and strengthen them, and preserve them in peace, O Lord God. I invite each of you, if you will, to join me stretching out your hand in blessing on this place. <coughs> Let us pray. May God's guiding hand be upon this coffee shop. May he use us to do his will and comfort his people. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forever. Amen. 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 And one last, if I may. O Lord God, we ask you to bless the wonderful snacks and coffee we're about to have. Bless and strengthen us body and soul. Forgive our sins and receive our thanks, O Lord, on this beautiful day that you have made. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you. I have a list here called needs list. And Solomon and some others are going to give everybody in the room a needs list. And I want to speak briefly about it. And no one is exempt. I want everybody to have this list. We'll give the preacher one before he leaves. <laughs> <coughs> These are needs that we have for this place. And it's a long list. But this is what I want to happen. If this is our vision for, for Glenn. I want this place to be a place, first of all, where anybody with a computer or without a computer who wants to come in here and be comfortable and quiet and work and read and pray, I want them to be able to come in here. We're gonna open from nine to four to start and see what happens. And then I'm hoping, in addition to those people, that people from the business community, the religious community, we have, we have uh, churches and synagogues up and down Peachtree Street that have wonderful godly people in them and if they knew what was going on here they would support us. Now their churches and synagogues won't support us officially because they're tied up with some folks that don't want us to be supported. Won't talk any more about that need us saying no, we don't say that. But there the Cathedral of St. Philip comes to mind. We have hundreds of people in that congregation who come here and serve every single month. I want them to come in here and, and speak with us and see what's going on.